Welcome to my next Road to WrestleMania video, WWF WrestleMania Challenge. Another great game I enjoyed in my childhood. And here's the Ultimate Warrior right here. Hulk Hogan! Do you want to be in that cockpit door? Hulk Hogan. For whatever he said, he did a weird promos, but when you were a kid, you didn't care because it sounded freaking awesome. Love the Ultimate Warrior. Rest in peace. All right, let's get started here. I'm gonna do one player mode. Soundtrack is better than this game. All right, and I don't wanna play as myself. Myself sucks. Yes, Macho King Randy Savage. Macho King this time, not man. The ultimate warrior. Ravishing Rick Rude, he needs to be in the freaking Hall of Fame. <laughs> Bruce Beefcake never liked him. Of course, the immortal Hulk Hogan. Andre the Giant. The big boss man who is about to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. Love this track right here. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I liked him when I was a kid also. And your, the yourself character kind of looks like Buff Bagwell. Or Marcus Alexander Bagwell before he became Buff Bagwell. Alright, so I picked the Ultimate Warrior. I want to beat up Bruce Beefcake. Bro, the Brutai, or the, or the Butcher, or the Man With No Name, or the Disciple, whatever name he wants to go by. All right, let me see if I remember the controls here. Oh, the Warrior Slam. Okay, that's how you pin. And at least this game has a crowd this time, even though they mostly look dead. Come on now. Oh, shoot, he's got the sleeper on me. That's his signature move. Yeah, it's the Ultimate Warrior track. I wish there's a way you can shake the ropes on here. That'd be pretty cool. So, Brutus Beefcake is like the equivalent of the Honky Tonk Man in the first WrestleMania game. Probably the least popular character, and in my opinion, sucks. I just never liked Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Never did. I never liked that character. But I would rather like that character, though, than the Honky Tonk Man. Oh, man. Don't get beat by Brutus Beefcake. Come on now. Oh, nice. Back body drop. Double axe handle. Go for the pin. Oh, jeez. Oh, almost threw him out. Nice. Even though he's in the ropes, I win. All right, so let's move on here. All right, player one. Is Macho King Randy Savage. And then. Oh! Back body drop. Hacksaw Jim Duggan ain't playing around here. But stop just running around in random places here. This is weird. Oh, he just went he just went for his signature finishing move, the uh football move, whatever it's called. Well, that's better than his stupid finishing move he had in WCW called Old Glory, was just a knee to the chest. Man, this wasn't Hacksaw Jim Duggan's music, was it? Huh. All right. Yeah, this is when he was the Macho King, Randy Savage. Queen Sherry was his manager. I remember the intergender tag team match at WrestleMania 6 between Macho King and Queen Sherry. Against the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, baby, and Sweet Sapphire. Oh, wait, 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 no, no. Oh, jeez. Well, better him than Beefcake. All right, so wait a minute. It showed the picture of yourself. I wasn't playing as myself. I was playing as the Macho King, but anyway. All right. At least they don't, they don't look as stupid walking around and running around as they did in WrestleMania. I mean, man, they look stupid in that game right there, walking around like some idiots. As Swindoll said in our low-budget review of WrestleMania, they need to walk around and be more, walk around 
as if they're walking around in a more productive manner, like they're about to do some damage. Ooh, knee to the face. Oh, now he's, oh uh, yeah, now he's, now he's running. Come on, how can Hacksaw Jim Duggan don't run? I remember the first and only time he turned heel was when he joined Team Canada for like a month. And WCW. Alright, that's it. Huh, my foot's on the road. He's got a foot. His foot's on the road, ref. Come on, ref. Pay attention, ref. Jess Ventura. If the ref didn't see a gorilla, then it didn't happen. Shut up, McMahon. Alright, what else to do here? Let's see. I'm gonna pick this time. I gotta pick Rick Rude. Rick Rude is freaking awesome. Who will my opponent be? Hmm. Gotta fight the Macho King. Nice. Rick Rude's track. Oh wait, what? Oh, oh wait a minute, I'm such an idiot. I forgot that I was fighting against Macho King this time. I wasn't playing as Macho King. And so that was why I wasn't trying to kick out. Idiot, pay attention, come on. Alright. Rick Root. Oh, the Root Awake the Root Awakening already. Wow. Nice. But Macho King gets up. How'd he get up from that so quickly? Rick Rude looks like he's wearing Jake the Snake Roberts tights here. By the way, where's Jake Roberts and Roddy Piper? Did this game not have enough sprites to fit any more characters in this game? Because if they could, where's Piper and um, Jake the Snake Roberts? But anyway. Kick out. Jeez, man. Oh, well, you can't mess with the Macho Man. Look like Rick Rude had a green speck on his forehead right there. What the heck was that about? I don't want to rematch. I don't want to use that jobber yourself. All right. All right, now I'm playing as the Immortal Hulk Hogan. Real American here. Oh, I just boss slammed the giant again. Oh, this time Andre. Oh, Andre boss slammed him and stabbed his face. They're adding a little twist to these tracks in the game, but that's okay. What are you drop kicking at? Oh, there you go. Hogan doing a drop kick? Yeah, right. Here's an interesting track. Again, I don't think Andre ever had interest music. But this one's this one's pretty cool. I wonder why they didn't put the Million Dollar Man in this game this time. Because I think around 1990, yeah, he did have the Million Dollar Man's interest music. Well, Andre became, like, in, invisible, or what the heck was going on there? But yeah, I was going to say, the, the Million Dollar Man has... That interest music is all about the money. So, I mean, it would have been cool if they put him in this game, but you know, uh, I guess they couldn't 
And if they did, they had better not have given him the girls and cars music again. All right. Now I'm playing as Andre against Bruce B. Page. to Squash this guy. Squash him. Remember that segment, the barbershop? Yeah, I remember that's when uh, Shawn Michaels threw Marginetti through the mirror. And then that's when Sid tore up the set. That was during the feud with Hulk Hogan leading up to WrestleMania 8. Which that was, someone messed up on that. Like, man, people want to see Hogan and Flair. But, oh well, it still ended up being a good pay-per-view. I loved it. We got to see Macho Man and Ric Flair. And Macho Man won the belt. Bruce Bootcase music, though, is pretty catchy. Ain't gonna lie. Back then, I would watch pay-per-views by listening to them. The screen was scrambled because my parents would not buy pay-per-views, so I had to listen to them. But then when I lived with my grandparents, they, my grandpa got mad saying, Stop doing that because you're going to ruin the TV. How are you going to ruin the TV with this just squiggly lines and that, just whatever. But anyway, all right. Now I'm playing as the boss man who will be a WWE Hall of Famer next month. Well deserved, a big boss man. For those of you who don't know, Jim Cornette told a story of how when he was Big Bubba Rogers, someone accidentally slammed a car door on his hand, and Bubba was like, Hey, brother, hey, brother, the door, the door, brother. He goes, Oh, I'm sorry. He opened the car door and walked off like nothing happened. Then when he finally got in the dressing room, he was like, Oh, my hand, oh, crying and screaming. And Jim Cornette's like, Well, why didn't you sell that before? Well, because the fans are watching. That's how dedicated and tough Ray Trader was. And there was another story of Dusty Rhodes. I think it was du yeah, Dusty Rhodes hitting Bubba over the head with a wooden chair. But they forgot to, to uh, what do you call it, pre-cut it or make it um, rig the chair to where it's not as hard. And it could break through his head easier. So they did, they did not even rig the chair. And Bubba still wore it around his neck and sold it as it didn't hurt. He's freaking tough. Rest in peace, Ray Trader, and oh man, rest in peace, Hogan right there with the Rude Awakening already, but no, he's back from the dead. Only the Hulkster and Macho King can get up from the Rude, Awak Rude Awakening like that. I don't think anybody's ever kicked out of the Rude Awakening, to the best of my knowledge. All right, so we'll do some tag team action right here. Did Rick Rude ever wrestle Hulk Hogan? I gotta look that up and do some research, or maybe someone can tell me in the comments. Rick Rude versus Hulk Hogan. That would have been something that I would have paid to see when I was little. Well, I didn't have any money when I was little. But if I did, I would have freaking paid to see that. Hulk Hogan and Rick Rude. Because Rick Rude, I mean, he was so freaking awesome. He was a great heel. And I think Bubba Ray Dudley was quoting saying he was the greatest heel in the history of this business. All right. That's how you tag back in the day. You jump over the top rope, and then your partner jumps over the top rope and into the ring. That's how you do it. Reminds me of pro wrestling for Sega Master System. The way they enter the ring, they jump over the top ropes. All right. The Warrior Macho King going at it again. I remember their classic match at WrestleMania 7 where Macho King lost, and he had to retire for a short period. But it was a good ending because him and Elizabeth reunited again. Good times. I remember the match made in hell with Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior against Conor Mustafa and Sergeant Slaughter. The same pay-per-view, Macho Man married Miss Elizabeth. Look at this, Rick Rude and the Ultimate Warrior teaming up here. Yeah, right. They faced each other at WrestleMania 5, where Rick Rude, I believe, beat the Warrior for the Intercontinental title. I think thanks to interference by Bobby the Brain Heenan. Yes, the Mega Powers overcome again, brother. Yep. The winners of the main event, the Mega Powers. All right, so let's see what else we're going to do here. Yourself trying to look all tough. Shut up. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, Ultimate Warrior and Andre, I think, wrestled each other. We weren't there and take and Andre wrestled each other. I don't remember that. So this game did come out in 1990. It was right before, 
I think right before the Undertaker debuted. Oh, look at that. The Warrior just threw Andre the Giant over the top rope. Oh, again, ECW. Imagine Andre the Giant in ECW. <laughs> okay, so now this is, what, the Ultimate Powers now? Against Andre the Giant, and I forgot who the heck I picked. Oh, man, this Andre's getting pwned right here. Why was Hacksaw Jim Duggan more challenging, but not Andre the Giant? Oh, there uh, that's who his partner is. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. I remember when he beat Steve Austin in like a few seconds for the WCW United States title. That was pretty much the beginning of the end of Austin and WCW, but that's okay. He went on to bigger and better things. Look at that. Hogan's doing the elbow drop. That should be Macho Man doing that as a ground attack because, you know, he does the big elbow. And I'm not sure how to do the signature moves on here. I know I'm not doing the best gameplay here, but oh well. It's all about nostalgia and a trip down memory lane, which leads to the road to WrestleMania. All right, the ultimate powers, whatever you want to call them. All right, they win, and I like how the ultimate warrior's on the cover. I'm about to the, the front of the main screen. This must have been right when the warrior... Yeah, right after the Warrior, I think, uh, won the world title. I forgot. I got to go back and look at that title screen right there. If that's the Intercontinental title or the world title. But anyway. All right. Now I'm using Rick Rude again. Rude's Beefcake teaming up with the Warrior. Oh, the Rude Awakening. So, Brutus Beefcake puts me to sleep. Can I get him back for the Rude Awakening and wake up that way? I fell. Oh, shoot. Well, speaking of, oh, I got out of that, though. I'm getting pwned right I better tag out. Where you at, partner? Yes. Boss Man and Rick Rude team. Whoa! What the heck? He just flew almost across the screen. All right. You about to serve a hard time, punk! I may be poor, but I'm proud! Proud to be an American! I may be a lot of things, but I ain't no thief! I remember his face turned when he turned on Slick and the Million Dollar Man because Million Dollar Man paid and bought for his services and so he gave the snake back to Jake Roberts. That's pretty cool. One of the best face turns in wrestling, in my opinion. Now we're in the Survivor Series match. What what kind of a move is that? Is that the uh, the nerve hold or whatever he used to do a lot back then? You know, it would have been great to see. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be the great greatest wrestling or scientific wrestling match. Imagine seeing Andre the Giant versus Yokozuna. Could the ring hold those two? Jeez, do the bonsai drop on Andre? Would they even hurt Andre? Would he just power out of it? All right. Whoa. Andre's almost out the freaking ring. I remember the old classic Survivor Series matches. I remember Survivor Series 90. I think it was the Warriors. Kerry Von Erich, the Ultimate Warrior, and then the Real Warriors against, uh, I think, the perfect team. I forgot. Or uh, Yeah, I have to go back and look. But I remember that promo, the Ultimate Warrior, the, Mon the Texas Tornado, the Monday Warrior, Kerry Von Erich, and the Real Warriors. They all did quick promos. Kerry did a quick promo. The Road Warriors did a quick promo. But then the team captain, the Warrior, you know how long-winded he is. All of a sudden, he does a long freaking promo. You can tell me and Gene Oakland is trying to politely cut him off. All right, thank you very much. Let's get you back to the ring. And who can forget those classic promos with Hulk Hogan and Mean Gene? And who can forget the Warriors promos and, of course, the Macho Mans. I'm the cream, yeah. The cream of the crop. All right. Better tag out. All right. Oh, I got pwned. Come on, get back in the ring. Yes. Now remember the big boss man versus Akeem, the African Dream. 
At WrestleMania 6, I came with Slick's entrance music, Job So Bro, one of the best entrance songs in wrestling history. All right, we're getting close to the end right here. See the last one? Will the warrior be the soul survivor? My first pay-per-view ever watched was Survivor Series 94. in San Antonio, not too far from me. And that was when uh, Bob Backlund beat Bret Hart when Owen Hart made his mother, th- mother throw in the towel. And that's when Undertaker beat Yokozuna in a casket match with Chuck Norris, a special enforcer. All right. So that's the end. My team, the survivors, Rick Rude, Boss Man, and Andre the Giant win. All right. So that's the end of Road to WrestleMania, WWF WrestleMania Challenge. Yeah, this game does bring back some good memories. And I do think it's still better than the original WrestleMania for NES. However, I think in a way, the old WrestleMania brings back, is more nostalgic. And I know these wrestling games may not be the best or they didn't age well. But again, this is all about nostalgia. Going back and playing these old games that I played throughout my childhood on these wrestling games. And there's plenty more to come. Remember, some of my games I may do next. I have a list, but it's a very tentative list because I got projects to do, and I try try to do this in a timely manner. I can't do every wrestling game I played in my childhood. I, I probably might be able to, probably not. But um, some of these games may not be WWE games. And so, yeah, so that is the end of WrestleMania Challenge. I'll see you guys in the next video. So then, God bless and take care.